dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Storm the Castle. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 11th and we're taking a look at Storm the Castle. That's right, and this game, uh, came, it's, it's a terribly recent game, recent game. it came out uh, this year. Uh, it's one to four players, uh, it was designed by Rick, Rich Nelson, and it was published by Giant Goblin Games. There you go, I got that all out. Uh, right, it was a Kickstarter, yes. um, but they also released at Gen Con, I believe, recently. So. Right, right. So there's a lot going on, it's essentially a reverse tower defense, where it's well, it's of, reverse castle panic. Right. To right. be more specific. Right. Good Good call. Um, and you're taking control of the, the hordes of evil peoples, uh, and each of you has a horde. Uh, there's the Arcanists, Arcanists, which I am. Who are you? You're the, dark, the dark Elves. elves. Then there's the Green Tide, and then the Undead Horde. We're the Dark Forces. Yeah, we're the Dark Forces. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to start creeping up towards the castle, breaking or climbing over castle walls, and the goal is to get into the center. And that's pretty much... Yeah. Pretty first much first one to have a soldier in the center wins. Now, it's one of those things that the, the box or in the literature say that it's it's a semi-cooperative. Not really. You, you never really cooperate. Yeah. But anyway, um, so so just like Castle Panic, when the baddies show up, which this time is us, they show up out here, and then they march you know, towards the center, destroy the walls, and there are cards that can be pulled that let you put the walls back, and um, the first thing you do is there's two of us, so... We're going to take a couple of these dudes, and we're going to position them within the within the thing, and we probably want to make it difficult for each other. So, actually, I'm going to put this in front of you. I'm going to put this one in front of you. Okay, and I'm going to I'm pick this side. Here, so. Oh, you are? Okay. There you go. Oh, okay, then I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, then, um, now I'm going to have this side. He's going to have this side. And we put out soldiers. Um, we've drawn our gold. So we each get five gold, right. and we're going to decide who's the boss. Yeah. They have this dynamic of the boss. The boss can't be attacked by the other player. Uh, obviously, in a two-player game, that's very important. Um, so we're going to take a number of gold secretly and then reveal it. And, wow, Ooh, we both have one gold, so we're going to have to do it again, I guess. I don't know. Usually, if someone has been the boss... In a tie, they'd stay the boss kind of thing. Well, yeah, the boss um, chooses who wins the tie. Anyway, so so you go after um, the walls primarily. So you want to set up your your guys. And so now, um, because let's just say that he won the boss, he's going to get the boss cards, which are just this short little deck. Right. And he's going to draw two and select one. Which I will do now. Discard the other one. And these little tokens here are little skulls with candles on them. And if you look very closely, which no one found out until me, <laughs> they have numbers in the wax. Right. Um, they're very subtle, and it's it's not the wax that drips the down the skull design. is shaped like yeah. It's not right. terribly the best design because it is very easy to overlook. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna shake them up random. Nick is gonna take two of them. Right, because I'm the boss. He's the boss. And, and then he... I'm gonna choose one. Now, what's unfortunate with these is that on both sides there's a different number. Which makes no sense. Yeah, so you know, we, we say the rounded side. Yeah, so we say the rounded side. And unfortunately, both of my rounded sides are three and four, so... Which I guess we technically should have just been these two. So anyway, he, he'd choose, because there's only two. This is a game that you definitely want to play with three or four. Uh, just two players is not really Lame. compelling, because when somebody's the boss, he can't attack them, right. so there's really no point. I don't know, whatever. You can still try to get in the castle faster. Um, and then we're gonna draw a number, one card. Now these are the these are the fantasy uh, defenders, defenders, fantasy defenders. Uh, deck. It's right. their action. So we're gonna draw one always, and then one for each of the sides that has right. complete wall here. The fantasy defenders are the ones in the gold trim. Um, they 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 are the ones protecting the castle. Yeah, they're and the NPCs. Yeah. What's interesting is is the fantasy defender card. This is this is uh, the card that that explains what the stats for each character is. This gets passed off off between us so i can use if i have the card i can use them to attack him or i can move them out of my way um where he can do the same right and they it, this changes hands at the end of every card activation right uh and so we're gonna pick so, five yeah here's the fantasy defender cards and i have five they're gonna come down and they it'd be better to do this off of oh you got some room over there all right good i didn't have any room 
Uh, and then the first thing that happens is we flip over the first one to figure out what happens first. Actually, technically, we're, we're buying our oh, units. Right, we have to buy units. So, so I'm going to buy my units. He's going to buy his. I'm going to put uh, Rampart, which is four gold. Uh, well, let me Pay do that. This. Put that right in the middle. And then I'm going to buy two dwarves. Put them here. That's another four, so I only have one gold left. And, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, I spend eight. Okay, so now uh, we flip over the first card. And the first card says, Choose one of the three paths on a battlefield. Starting with the battlefield space closest to the castle, uh, the dark forces unit of the first space takes attack three. And then the unit in the second space takes attack two, and the third space attacks right. whatever. So, so because he has the fantasy defender card, this is his choice. He gets to decide where... The, that attack goes. So I'm obviously going to attack one of his, but unfortunately he only has one unit out, so attack three, nobody, attack two, nobody, attack one. So attack one, what it means is you always roll the red die. Always, on attack. And then one is plus one of the white die. And you can have up to four, and they only supply three dice, which are three white dice, which is unfortunate. But anyway, so here we go. I'm going to roll and see if you get a wound. And actually you do. I rolled a, I was lucky enough to roll a, a flaming skull, which counts as a hit, but also allows me to roll all the white dice again. So I've got one, two, and I think he's going to be dead here. Three. So there are three hits on you. He is dead. He is dead. So yeehaw. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that these dice, they only have two sides. Every one of them only has two sides that actually have something on them. Right. The rest are blank. The other four are blank. And so that's really frustrating. And hopefully you'll get to see that. I got really lucky there. That never happens. Uh, so anyway, so that that's the end. Okay, we're going to draw our hand of cards, and it's three, right? It's three, but on your but turn you get to draw an extra card. Plus one. And I guess you're going to go first, because right. you were the boss. So I'm going to not draw that Boobity for now. Mm. And um, each of the cards has uh, a magic cost, which, because I'm not a magic faction, I never have that. But he is, so he might. And then a gold cost, which is on green, which doesn't really make sense. But it's surrounded with gold, so whatever. So I'd have to pay three in order to use this card, and then you have to look at the text to see when it's uh, playable. Some of it says play any times, some of it says play before a battle, and then there's also the RIP, which means remains in play. So uh, you definitely need to look at your cards and see which ones are best. Right. Is there any you're going to play? Um, we I have two gold. Guess, I guess I'll... Uh, let's see... Do you do, do, do charge your non champion hero large siege unit has And time's up. You forfeit your turn. It's one my less turn. Move this turn. It's taking far too long. I guess I well no, because I can't I can't do that. Well it says non champion hero. Are you Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll no, that doesn't that stuff well this card doesn't help me. Alright, so every when you when you play, each character, each little uh, icon that you have representing a character has um, two moves that they can make. One as an army move, so the entire army moves forward one, uh, if you want them to, and then an additional one for them. And those unless they're slow. Unless they're slow, in which case they only allow one movement. In which case he is slow, I believe. So every unit has one free unit. Right. So everyone moves forward one. Now he can move forward another one, but he cannot because he is slow. Um, now I have five turns, so let's put him back. So I have five additional moves, so I can move him. And if I had four other characters, I can move them each forward one as well. Um, but since he's closest to here, he's going to attack, but only he only has an attack. Uh, one. Or you could spend four to go into one of these oh, yeah. locations, or I which could spend really four. doesn't make sense. But... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, what you're doing is you're spending two army moves, so one of your army characters can't move, and then two additional move points, so two people can't move an additional space uh, to get to here, and then you have to fight the, the peasants to gain uh, plus two draw, plus two gold, plus two magic, or plus two hand. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack the wall, and I'm going to roll, and I rolled a nothing because these dice suck. Yeah, it happens all the time. Uh, if he had, had gotten one, then he'd put a damage token on that wall, and each wall takes three damage token before it's obliterated. Um, he could also have paid a gold to put a ladder up, and right. that would let him move past the wall. Ladder. And again, it's the first one to the center. Um, there is an undead faction that allows you to phase through walls. That's really the only ones that let you ignore walls. I think there, I have a card that lets me, um, a climbing glove or something like that, that, that lets me do it. Anyway, yeah, yeah, those are little icons. The, they feel kind of cheap sometimes, because the whole point is you have to stop the wall and obliterate it before you, you know, get past it. But right. if you have enough gold magic, you could possibly win in a couple of turns. 
Um, anyway, so now it's done with his turn. Right. So before I, before I go any further, um, because I'm done, I have four cards. I'm only allowed three cards in my hand, so I have to discard one. I have to discard this one. And that's one of the biggest problems that I have with this game is the limits. Everyone is only allowed three cards in their hand plus three boss cards. And you can only play boss cards if you're the boss. So if he becomes boss next round, I can't play this card. But he keep it. But I keep and it. And hopefully he gets a boss yeah. next time. Um, and then you, you're only allowed to ever have ten gold and ten magic. My character is, uh, right now is all about magic, so it kind of helps me to have magic. The reason that it's there is because it's way too cheap otherwise. Because you could literally just win in one turn if you had enough magic. You know, kind of thing in the, right, in the right cards. I guess. Yeah, so, so unfortunately it is kind of arbitrary, but that's why it's there. So it's one of those things that they really should have, I don't know, tweaked it a little bit differently. Um, so now it's my turn. I draw my card. Oh, well, actually we flip this over yeah. first. This goes to him. Hello. And uh, this and one this says... gets traded off on like a drop of a dime. By the way, you have to read the instructions. But basically, if these guys are ever activated, whether through him or the cards or whatever, um, I get the card. And if turn changes, I don't know. There's like three conditions where this thing gets shuffled around. So this one says destroy one battlefield location. We do not have battlefield locations right now. If we had, they would be in these spots. Right. And it's usually a card that gives them out, and they give us certain benefits. Um, that sort of thing. So don't, doesn't have that, so I drew my other card. I'm going to look, see if I want it. Now this, I do have the climbing claws that let me climb over walls, but I'm not going to be able to get there in time, so I'm not going to pay it right now. I'm just going to move everybody up for one. Um, my catapult here has range, so I'm going to attack at some point, but I'm going to go ahead and move my dwarves' army moves again, and I'm going to attack the wall with this dwarf. Oh, I actually got a two. I'm doing good here. So there's. Oh, I was going to put gold on it for some reason. So damage tokens, boom. I'm gonna and do dwarves that dwarf. have three damage that they can take. And that dwarf, whoa, one, two. Yeah, sure. Only two, but still, he's, he's close to death. I don't think I have another damage. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so there you go. And then I'm going to do the catapult. Now, I could shoot at the guy that's behind the wall. I just lose one range. But because he has three range, one, one, two, three, I can't quite hit it. So I'm going to have to go after the wall. And he has... Well, he has three range. Yes, you can. You can go one, two. It goes by. It's go by these, not this. Oh, does so it? One, two. Well, yeah, but this I'm, one becomes three. Minus one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so I'm gonna go after him, and I actually get an attack uh, two, which is not a whole lot for a huge catapult, and nothing. nothing. There's nothing. And that happens a heck of a lot. Yeah, uh, you get really annoyed. Thing. So um, that's pretty much all I can do. I'm not gonna spend my cards right now, and so after my turn, we're gonna flip card. Uh, this gets passed back right. to me. Kind of thing. Just put all my stuff. Oh, no, not that one. Where is it? Oh, here. Sorry. And uh, this card says, return a wall that has been destroyed to no castle side. No wall has been, been destroyed yet, so, so, so far. So you can see it just now it's his turn, and he's going to draw a card, right. and, and so on and so forth. This, this up here, which you can't see because it's off camera, but I don't want to lift up the Yeah, just show the little check. sword. Yeah, there's a little sword that, and, a, and a marker over here that indicates the rounds. When you get to eight rounds, you're... you're if you everyone, haven't won, the everyone, game is over. Yeah, everyone loses. That's the only way that it's semi-cooperative, because if you're if you're retarded enough not to get in the castle before the end, you have to kind of help each other. Right. Otherwise, whatever. But there's a lot of, you know, there there are big heroes that come up, and so you, like, put them to protect. The, and there's more than, I think there's at least four, so you could potentially do on every side, and then it's going to make it really difficult to get through, and yada yada. So that's kind of it. If you've played Castle Panic, like I say, it's really just Castle Panic in reverse. Instead of defending the castle, you're trying to tear down the walls. And I think I actually like that better. I like uh, attacking the walls rather than defending the walls. Right. Um, the problem I have with this game is we haven't even gotten to half of the little things. Yeah. And they're not really engaging. It's not one of those games that's like, oh, it's so complex, you just have to play it a couple times to get into it and whatever. It's like... Well, this this game is it's too simple. Let's let's add something else and let's just I don't know. Let's make them you know we can flip them over and now yeah. the units are dazed. It's like well what does that mean? Well let's have a rule book that doesn't say until you hunt and find it under a different title. That's kind of our problem and I, I really hate to be nasty about it, but this rule book sucks. Is awful. It is really really bad and it's it's um. It, it is not linear. It doesn't have like an easy table of contents. Uh, when it says a certain term, sometimes that term is not a subheading. You just have to keep reading. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things you have to read an entire time in order to kind of know where maybe those things are. So when they come up, it's like, oh, I think that was on either, you know, so somewhere in the middle. So, yeah. so let's whatever. But we spend a lot of time and the, the verbiage is not terribly the best. Um, so this, this does not help the situation. 
Um, they really need, we all need to, like, game developers need to do play testing of rule books. You know, we need to have use testing of rule books. Right, agree. Because there are too many rule books that just miss the mark. Um, I, I think that most everything's in here. I think we still had one question we've never been able to find. I'm not sure what that was. Um, but other than that, uh, even if you even if you know how to play it and you get rid of the rule book and that's not a consideration anymore, there's just so many little things that are kind of like passing this thing all the time. So lame. It should just be like maybe a roll or I don't know. There has to be some other dynamic because it's really it's it happens way too much. Right. Um, then again, you can say, well, you, you get used to the characters pretty well, so you know what to do, so you don't even need to have this card, so yeah, well, you know, yada yada. Um, I think that the number of units is fairly well balanced, because if you put out all your dwarfs like I did, um, I'm not going to get another dwarf until they're dead, so it forces me to use other units, and I have no problem with that. Um, the extra buildings don't really seem to make a difference unless I don't really you draw know what the certain. If you draw the certain card or whatever that allows you to put a building out, you know these yeah. guys they have buildings in the castle too that would like add one defense and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. But it all gets a little too. Oh yeah, the ones cluttered. in here, the one, the ones that go in the castle. I don't know what they do. Yeah, I, I have no yeah. Idea. Of course you. Well, I mean, it's it, it has to do with the card. But when you put them in there, I forget what it is. But like the church adds like one defense or whatever kind of right. thing, and you put it out there, and then you, you can destroy that to weaken everybody again. The, the problem, so. the problem that I have with the things inside here is the first time we came across the the inside buildings, the the castle buildings, was a card that said put these four out, but it didn't say what the four did. Yeah. So I think we were supposed to also go through the deck and find the cards that went along. But it with didn't these, say that. But it didn't say. Uh, it just I don't know. Yeah. So so. Again, Again, it's a, it could have been a simple game that was done really well, I think. Like, I think that this could be every bit as fun as Castle Panic. Right. It's just that they kind of bogged it down with kind of arbitrary rules that aren't intuitive. Um, so it's one of those things that we've talked about. Hey, we should just do house rules. Like, if this was my game, this is actually Theron's. Thank you, Theron. For Thank you, Theron. Borrow it. Um, but if this was my game, I would absolutely do house rules to just kind of simplify it and make it more like Castle Panic. Make it cooler. Uh, and we're ragging on it really hard, though. You know, back it off a little bit. Okay, I'm you gonna. Know, I'm not gonna rag on it independent, anymore. Independent, independent developer. Well, I certainly am. With, with the exception of these cards are crap. Yeah, they're these very cards cheap. Are, they're, they're like paper, but they have like this kind of vinyl texture to make it feel like they're. Well, they're, they paid for the linen texture, linen, which is that's cool. That's what it was, not vinyl. Uh, linen, linen embossed, you know, kind of texture that that obsequious, you know, uh, coating that they have. But the card stock, I I I said it's like fruit leather because it feels like if you hold it long enough it'll just start going Brr. yeah it's just so weird it's so yeah and they've all got these like uh, burrs on them so they kind of stick together at times it's, it's horrible I and uh, i came across one card that has a big old crease in it and this one here and, and you can't even bend them past like this without getting a crease yeah. so unfortunately that was a definitely a misstep there um, the tokens are fine. The tokens are nice, although we did complain about the, you know, the wax being really hard to see. It's just not well designed. Yeah, um, and they're on both but sides. But it's cool. It's just it should be blown up or something, and yeah, it should be the same number or something. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, uh, the core of the game can be fun. I, I do definitely. Again, I'm going to bring up. I hate that there's only four. I mean, there's there are four blank sides. There's only two on useful sides on dice. every dice. And while it's cool that if you roll the flaming skull, you get to roll all of them. Sometimes it it doesn't amount to anything. Yeah. So it, there's too much luck. It's it's like okay, I'm gonna kick some ass. I've got my right units out. I did it right. So now I can I can you know bulldoze the the walls with my dwarves, and then I can hop over with my archers or something like that. But it's all for naught if you happen to roll like I just did. Nothing. Well, you rolled a critical. No, I didn't roll this. One. Oh. I got one, but nothing, you know, no, nothing on the white dice. So that that maddens me more than anything else. Even the rule book and all that stuff, that drives me insane because you're doing this all the time and you just have nothing that comes of it. Now, again, like I say, if, if you got like regular six-sided dice and said, you know, like one through three is a, is a miss and then, you know, un, un, unless it's like the big-ass unit, that would be like three through six is a hit, you know, kind of thing. It, it could be so much cooler. Yeah. It could be so much more fun and, like, hectic and, and whatever. Um, just the fact that you can use an entire turn and do nothing is maddening. Um, these guys, like, you have uh, uh, peasants that are, like, guarding these different locations. I've never gone for any of them because they don't really 
add anything to it. It's like, oh, I can get two gold, right? Oh, wow, well, my gold limit, limit is 10. 10. And even if if we play so it adds two gold, so your t gold limit is 12, that doesn't really help. Not really. Nope. And, and the draw would be possibly nice, but... Uh, discard down to three. Exactly. And so, but the hand, I guess, is the only yeah. one that would make sense because you, you get, get to five hold more cards. cards. Three. But yeah, that's just aggravating. Being the boss, I never ever pledged for being the boss. Uh, one thing we didn't mention is every time you get a wall that counts as and or defeat a hero uh, that that right. counts as vote a boss. So these are two vote points. So if I add a gold, that'd be three. You know, kind of thing. To gain the boss. Um, which that that mechanic is a little weird as well, but I, I guess it makes sense because it's notoriety kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I really don't want to bash this game too hard because like the board is what Mel made pretty well. Most of the tokens, most of the graphics, the heroes are cool, the factions are cool. Yeah. I think it's fairly easy to figure out you know what each unit does because you've got this board. You know that's very handy. Um, they did kind of have a missed opportunity on the back, but I do hate games that force you to turn over all the time, so that's not really a big deal. It's just the rules, the dice, and kind of some of the arbitrary stuff. And I really do think that it was like, I don't know, this might be too simple. Let's add a few more things. That's yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, these indie, indie games, this might be their first game because I haven't heard of them before. Um, and I don't want to discourage them. It's just like, this is a good first try. Uh, try harder. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just streamline a little bit and play test those... those uh, rule books yeah so if you saw this one and you're a big can a fan of castle panic or something like that you could buy it just don't use the rules that it comes with yeah make possibly. up your own and it would be so easy to do that yeah so yeah. It just literally treat it like castle panic so um some of the cards are also a little bit you know uh, it takes a while for you to understand what they what they mean or what they're pertaining to and like like we came up before like putting the buildings out sometimes you don't know what to do until you draw that card so these are this is a really thick stack. You're not going to get through this entire stack. So you could be playing a couple times and never get that card. So you'll never come across that, never know what to do, you know, kind of thing. So, so just having a rule book that just explained it and had nice bullet points, because um, there's you know there are some pictures in here, but it's not. I mean, there's no anatomy of a card. I mean, you know, it's like wow, there's but a lot of text and it's a thick rule book. It doesn't need to be this thick. So, yeah, a few missteps have made this. Uh, a bit of a chore to play. Yep. Is there anything else you want to say? Because no. I, I feel bad for. No, no, I think that's, I think that's it. it but... Well, yeah. Sometimes you have to bash something to to get something good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's our two cents. Uh, please, if you have other recommendations for games that we can tear apart, apparently, <laughs> let us know. We're just being honest, man. Yeah. We're, we can't help but be honest. Uh, we did not have a lot of fun playing this game the way it was, you know told to us it was meant to be played and largely it's it's because of the rule book that we just sit there like oh i'm so yeah. tired of just flipping through this damn to rule me book. it's this yeah it's but that's because i made them read the rule book more often so. that's true but i this uh, nothing one nothing uh, one. Oh, nice. one. Oh, yeah, nothing one oh no you're on a good nothing nothing one nothing one not one. Oh, i got one one nothing nothing not so yeah anyway so you can show we're, we're kind of perturbed with that. Yep. I am especially. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art print, short stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, we'll chat with you all day. That's right. Uh, we're also blogging. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, bits of the world that I've created for 10 plus years. Take a look if you like it, share it, support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com where I have short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, check that out. All right, guys. See ya. Oh. Good. No, no. No, mine counts. Good. Next time on Do a Review, Cowboy Bebop the movie. Do the thing with the whatnot and stuff. It's hot, Nick. Oh, excuse me. No. Okay. Hey, everybody. Today is the 11th, and we probably should get the game ready to go. Oh, yes, we probably should. <laughs> totally where the, forgot. Where the fuck is it? I don't know. That's what's underneath your comics. Oh, all of them are even pile of comics. Have fun storming the castle.
Nice miracle max. That's not how he sounds at all, but no, yes, I like know. I could sound like Billy Crystal. I will not go into that good night. <laughs> <laughs> quietly or whatever, I forgot the name. Or the way to say that. I will not go quietly, quietly into, into that, that good night. Into that dark night. I will not go quietly into that. Into the night. I don't know. That dark night. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, they do. It, it, they feel like leather, like fruit leather. Because they're kind of sticky, and but Theron was joking about how he had to like pry them all apart because apparently they were you know stacked together. And I, I suspect, I think Nick does too, that they were stamped together, yes, and that kind of crushed the uh, you know, the coating. And so he, he literally said he had to pry them off, some of them. So that's unfortunate. And you know, a lot of any developers they kind of have to suffer that because you know, when you're new at this, it's kind of like, where do I go? I don't know, you just find some place in China and give it a shot. Um, but it's definitely something that they should have had a prototype and known better. You know, don't don't pay for the linen if your cards are so crappy. Like, get get better cards. I mean, I think they're designed well. I like the artwork. Um, designed well enough. And that's another thing is that the box does not fit all the cards well. Of course, we do have expansion Kickstarter stuff. No. But they really should have thought of that. Um, they have one extra deep one, which is nice for this deck, but we have a whole bunch of overlap that goes on to other... So, yeah, it's it's irritating. Just these little things add up. You can forgive the box, you can forgive the rule book, but those damn dice. And the box, and the heel rule book, and the, you know... Cards. Yeah. Yeah, the cards is a big thing, too. Man, I hate those dice, though. I never want to see those dice again. I can't think of another game that has only two helpful sides. Don't, most games have at least three. But I'm sure they're out there. Just not in my house. Not in my house! Just, mm -mm. Okay. Storm the castle!